In this video we're going to look at our ionic compounds, particularly when they're in their solid state. So ionic compounds, as the name suggests, are made up of ions, that is their particles, so positive cations and negative anions, held together by very strong ionic bonds between those. Now, on a whiteboard and or on a bit of paper in an exam, it's really hard to show the full nature of this. So I'm going to use this model here just to sort of represent what I've got drawn. Notice that it's in three dimensions. Every ion, when we look in the middle of it, is attached to multiple other ions of the opposite charge. This is what we call a 3D lattice. And it's 3D lattice and the nature of the ionic bond help us explain a lot of the properties. So let's go through what we need to be able to do. One, identify the particles, so they are ions, cations and anions. We need to be able to describe the bond. The bond is the ionic bond. Now because they're positives and negatives, they've got an electrostatic or an electric attraction. That is also in a direction. Notice the lines here, they're representing it as in a direction towards each other. Because it's strong and directional, that makes it inflexible. We can't bend or move these ions without shifting everything around it. So this is why it's not malleable or ductile like metals. It's a similar type of attraction. Theirs is also an electrostatic attraction, but theirs are non-directional for their particles, which is why they can be, the particles can be moved. We need to be able to describe the structure. That's this word 3D lattice. So the idea that each ion is bound to multiple other ions, not just one other ion in a 3D structure. You're not expected to be able to draw the 3D structure in an exam, but you are expected to draw something like this and label it. The last part is discussing the properties. And I'm going to stick to my two-dimensional picture here because that's what you're probably going to do in an assessment. The characteristic properties are here, so I'm going to go through each of them very quickly and there are some videos on the others um, on this blog post. So, the first one, the hard and brittle, this is to do with the ionic bond. Because it's very strong and it's directional, that makes it hard, it's it takes a lot of energy to break that. The brittle bit means that when I do have enough energy, it will actually break lots of them at once because the ions need to stay together as a group of ions and it'll just break it into two lattices or three lattices or whatever. The very high melting point is also to do with the strength and direction of the ionic bond. Just like it was very hard, it takes a lot of heat energy to break these ionic bonds sufficiently for each ion to move separately. And that's what melting is. It's when the ions move separately. They're able to move away from each other because of the amount of energy, heat energy present. Their solubility is one of the hardest ones to explain. And when we understand molecules well, we can understand we can explain this a little bit better. But for now, just understand that water is what we call a polar solvent. It's got a slightly positive side and a slightly negative side. So the slightly negative side of water could surround our, ca our cation on the edge here. And when it's pulling on, and there's enough water molecules here, and it's pulling on it stronger than these two bonds here, and probably the one into the board and out of the board, when there's enough water molecules, it can remove that iron and dissolve it. And then the positive side of the other water molecules will remove each anion and so on. So, but it needs what we call a polar solvent, a solvent that's got a slightly positive and a slightly negative side. Basically, think of water here. And the last one is conductivity. As a solid, ionic compounds do not conduct electricity. But when we melt them, so overcome those ionic bonds for melting or dissolve them, overcome the ionic bonds for dissolving them in soluble polar solvents, sorry, in polar solvents where they're soluble, then the ions are free to move. And because they have a charge and they are free to move, they will conduct electricity in these two states. So molten would be a little subscript of an L and dissolved probably is going to be in water, so a cube. 